Give a warm welcome, a round of applause, and a whoop whoop for Ivana Lynch. So, um, a few months ago, I was sitting in a theater watching the new animal rights movie Dominion, and all I kept thinking was, will this ever end? If you haven't seen the movie, it's pretty much hell on earth, documenting practically every type of animal abuse and exploitation in very graphic detail. And you do start to think you're never getting out of that theater. It was a horrible experience, and we all sat there crying, gripping hands, simultaneously cursing humanity and feeling grateful that we weren't born animals. Eventually it ended, and everyone stumbled out of there, back up, at, back up the stairs and into Leicester Square, upset, disorientated, and enraged. Everyone just sort of stood around, looking at each other, and not knowing how to move forward. Soon we got on to discussing the worst bits and what parts we absolutely couldn't look at and what we were all going to do to stop the world from being so dark. Animal exploitation had been thrown in sharp relief right in front of our eyes and we all had new intentions to be better, fiercer, tireless activists. But mostly, I have to admit, the feeling I felt standing in the sunshine with my friends away from these horrible images and shrieks and cries was relief. Relief for myself to not have to feel that secondhand pain, to not have to imagine innocent vulnerable beings in crippling agony, to get far away from that real life horror movie and never return to it. Thank God that's over, I thought. We were traipsing quietly to buy Chloe by the time I turned to my friend who had been remarkably stoic, stoic and still during the screening. And I asked him, how on earth were you able to keep watching that screen? I hadn't been able to actually look at most of it. I cried and watched the screen through a tight web of fingers. He answered simply, because those animals deserve to be seen. Reminded me that it, it wasn't just a movie or a fictional narrative we could ponder so really uncomfortable retrospect. Will this ever end? The question floated back to the forefront of my mind as I forced myself to acknowledge that this movie had been playing for decades, intensifying in violence, without relief or toilet breaks, and that it was still happening right now. It's happening right now. The animals we witnessed on that screen were far past saving, long dead, their cries forever silenced. But they lingered in our memories as ghostly reflections of the animals suffering and dying the exact same fate as we stand here now. For the animals, it never ends. Every passing moment is this living, unrelenting hell for them. And if we can't sit and witness their lives and deaths for 120 minutes of one day without suffering, how can we tolerate this violent abuse being inflicted on another being for an entire lifetime? After the movie, the conversation got around to PTSD, to self-care as an activist, and the need to go home, process what we saw, and recenter. How to regain our sense of equilibrium and peace in order to return to the world and be effective, amicable activists. I believe self-care is crucial as an activist, and so is being able to relate to strangers. I talk about this a lot with my friends, about how it's important to not look at every slaughterhouse video and to censor what you take in, lest you lose the ability to relate to strangers or your hopeful outlook for the future. Learning how to function and adapt to this non-being society we live, in, we live in is undeniably an important part of being an animal rights advocate. But today is unique. Today we have this rare and special opportunity to express what is in our hearts when we see an animal being abused. Today is a day to show others how you feel and what you see. Today is a day where we truly contemplate the injustice of the world for animals and where you don't apologize for how deeply you feel for these victims. The remarkable thing about these animal rights documentaries is that we're watching the story as it's still being told. We watch documentaries and movies and read history books depicting the, war, the horrors of wars and genocides long past and we shake our heads and we hope these things never happen again. Most tragedies like this are hidden from our eyes as they're happening, too awful to be watching in real time. But most tragedies of this scale don't last as long as the story of animal abuse. But how can these stories remain stories when they're happening in real time, when they don't have an ending yet, when we can get active and become part of it, when we collectively have the ability to change the ending? I want to remind you today to not give up showing up for animals, because what you feel for them, what all of you who have turned up today to represent the animals of the world feel when you witness animal abuse, is the reality of the situation. 
And the reality of animal exploitation can be a difficult place at which to arrive when we live in a society that lies and misleads in order to make certain industries persist and thrive. And reality can also be a difficult place to dwell. Indeed, we're conditioned and, in my opinion, brainwashed to understand eating animals as normal. And then our mind does its contortions to prevent us from seeing the reality it's a, because accepting the truth is utterly, utterly devastating. I don't know about you, but every day I feel pressure to temper my feelings to conform to society and make everyone feel comfortable. And sometimes when I'm not connected to my truth, people say, do you mind that I'm eating meat? I say, don't mind me. Or when they ask, you can't eat this, can you? I find myself apologizing for being an inconvenience. Living in a society where most people brush over this violence and passively participate in it, some days I lose my motivation to keep speaking up about it. And I surmise, perhaps it isn't so bad if everyone is okay with it. I get talked out of my gut feelings. All it takes is watching one documentary for me to hear what my heart is saying. That the world has got it wrong for animals, and we can't afford to pipe down and enable this atmosphere of apathy and disconnectedness. So when people ask me, do you mind? I reply, don't mind me, mind the someone whose life was sacrificed for a meal. And when asked, you can't eat this, can you? I counter, yes, I can eat that, but I won't. Reality is difficult to face because the feelings it, evo it evokes are discomforting, awkward, and at times alienating. But society makes it too easy for people to turn their back on animals, on cruelty, on injustice, on exploitation, on reality, in the same way you can turn off a horror movie when it gets too real. Animal abuse is not a movie, however, and it can't be turned off, and it has not yet ended, and that's why it's so important today to unite speak for the voiceless, and also to speak oh, to the small voice oh, within each oh other that says, this is wrong, and I want to change things, so that those voices become stronger, louder, and more people listen to their own small inner voice and have the courage to say, I'm with you. I want to talk about empathy as well, and how it's our nature to care for other people and beings when we feel for them. Empathy, to be clear, is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. I've been watching this TV show lately, Sensei, and as I do these days, uh, I started relating the show back to the animal rights movement. Ever since going vegan five years ago, I now see vegan analogies in pretty much every story I read or watch. Anyway, in Sensei, there are eight characters who've never met and who live in different areas of the world and who all simultaneously start to feel what each other feels. Pain, exhaustion, fear, euphoria. And the one thing that strikes me is how much they all care for each other. I've been watching it going, why do they care so deeply for each other when they don't even know each other? Even though they don't know their names, their families, their history, they fight for each other's lives like there's pens on it. And the reason they care so deeply about these almost strangers is because they can feel what the other feels. And as viewers of the show, you just accept it as natural. Of course you would care for and protect someone whose feelings you shared. And yet that's not what we normally do with strangers. I can't help but watch this show and think how much more peaceful and connected the world would be if we could all feel what the other's feeling, if we could all understand the roots of each other's pain. Instead of judging each other and feeling threatened by our otherness, we'd want to give each other a hug. Instead of alienating from each other, judging, tearing down, shunning, we would uplift, protect, encourage and nurture each other. I can't help but feel that empathy is the quality most needed in our world. It's the quality I see in abundance in the animal rights community. We don't have a magical ability to feel each other's feelings, as in Sensei, but we all have empathy within us and we all can exercise this quality further to achieve a society that is more respectful, more tolerant and more compassionate towards otherness. Towards other religions, towards other genders, towards other races, and today and every day towards other species. Where society once disconnected us from our natural empathic impulses as children, in caring for animals we reclaim that empathy. And now it's time to practice extending our circle of empathy further than before, because it is the quality most needed in this world. I'm almost done. I'd also like to touch on extending that empathy to our fellow humans, which, alongside our outrage for animals oppressed by humanity, is a tricky balance to strike, but it's vital in our quest for animal liberation. A few months ago, I was in India on a trip with the charity Save the Asian Elephants to investigate and raise awareness on the plight of Asian elephants who are under serious threat of extinction. 
we were working undercover and pretending to be tourists. And in one instance, we went to a location where elephants were kept and trained to participate in tourism and religious ceremonies. It was pretty grim. We saw elephants chained, chained at the ankles and isolated from their peers, left to just stand there swaying hour upon hour. I was wandering around, observing the elephants, when this mahout started frantically beckoning for me to follow him. He led me to an enclosure where a female elephant was chained and swaying. He had only a few words of English, but he communicated that he wanted to show me something. And then he started to bark instructions at the elephant. Sit down. Lie down. Stand up again. Bow your head. Instructions, no, orders, that this elephant had learned through painful training. Obedience that was, was a result of deep trauma. I was suddenly stuck in a very conflicting situation. I did not want this elephant to put on this sinister display of slavery, slavery and subjugation. She was being made to perform and relive her trauma solely for my entertainment. But when I looked back to the man, he was beaming eagerly. I realized that he had this very innocent desire to make me smile. He wanted to impress me, to connect. He didn't realize that what he was doing was deeply offensive to me, and I couldn't find the words to tell him, nor could I in the position we were in. But as I looked at him, all toothless smile and broken English, as he slapped the elephant's flanks and barked more orders, I felt at a loss to cast aspersions on his character when it was clear life had given him so little. Here was someone who the world did not care enough for in order for him to care about others. He could only care for himself or perhaps those closest to him. He didn't feel anything for that animal. He couldn't feel her pain. I'm not excusing this man's cruelty and apathy, and I also don't believe the social injustices of mankind need to be entirely resolved before we can turn our attention to those of animals, and indeed much of that work can only be done in tandem. But I'm saying that empathy and generosity of spirit is often a privilege, and in another people's shoes, we, not, we might not be able to afford the empathy to empathize deeply with others. Michael Jackson sung about how we have to look in the mirror and make that inner change before we can change the world. But not everyone gets the opportunity to consider and nurture themselves, and thus those around them. Many people are struggling to just get by day by day, financially, emotionally, spiritually. So as you extend your circle of compassion to include all types of beings, I implore you to appreciate where others are coming from and how they have come to see the world so differently to us. I often ask, what pain and denial must this person be in to accept the brutality of killing and eating animals in, in factories as normality? And how can I relate to that? We can't just point the finger and get enraged at people who abuse animals. It doesn't change their minds and it just makes us angry. It creates an us and them mentality, a further disconnect and heightened tension, an excuse for them not to listen to our message. I do not say this to go easy on people or to come across as nice. I say it because I think deeply about the quickest way to help animals. And I see that the scapegoating and vilification of people who participate in animal abuse does not help the animals plight. We need to connect with others who see animals differently first in order to open their minds and help them make the connection. That is, as I see it, the nuanced, complicated, but vital work of the animal rights movement. I also just want to say how much I admire each and every one of you who showed up today. The bravery, imagination, and optimism it takes to be fed a world one way and to say, I'd like it to be different, better, kinder, is truly awe-inspiring. I want to thank you for listening to my speech and for making this community so inspiring and powerful and to send you love and strength as you continue to spread the message of equality for animals. Thank you.